morning, everybody. Welcome back to RC today. So, you ready to nerd out with the 90s show truck? <laughs> Ever since I did the uh, white extra cab and we went the show truck theme, you can see it over there with all of its shocks, all of its glory. I once put the black Scottsdale body on that chassis and immediately knew I had a mission. And um, I managed to get a hold of a red body. I'm not going to say what favors I had to do for that, but um, we got one here. It is mint and brand new. Doesn't even have the bumpers mounted. I just opened the mirrors out on it the first time. And we're going to start working on another TF2 build, show truck, 80s, 90s style. I've got all the parts, or most of the parts. So we're going to do some things a little bit different. Um, I'm still waiting on, I've got the Traxxas bumpers coming. I've fallen in love with that mod. Um, we've got them on the black truck and those videos. Um, I'll show you more of that later. But, um, yeah, we're going to swap off uh, my favorite grill. This has the two-piece grill. And uh, we're going to put that one on because I just love the way that one looks. We've got the centerline Scorpions, the 155s. The same ones we did on the other. Yeah, I know I don't like doing the same thing twice, but they it's the perfect combo. I, I look, the other, score, or other centerline wheels they have, RC4 Drive, I can't remember what they're called. I just don't like the style as much. When I was a kid, this is what we had, the Scorpions. These were the these were the Cat's Meow, and uh, they absolutely killed that with these. I mean, it's even got the scale Phillips head bolts holding the center caps on. Just no way around it. That was the look, and uh, got the Interco IROC 155 scale tires. I thought these were Swampers. What did they say? These are the IROCs. Okay. No, this is Super Swamper on it. Okay, I'm not not mistaken. It's a late night. I've been, it was a long day, actually. We filmed a video earlier. Got the build-off truck, the patinaed blue Scottsdale. Um, up and running, new electronics. I um, haven't got to drive it yet. Um, I did the shop truck running video. I've um, got electronics in that. So I'm about electronic out. I am ready to do some TF2 suspension work, which is kind of like my therapy at this point in life. I love messing with these leaf spring trucks. Um, we've got lift blocks. We've got uh, the dual front shock hoops. We've got uh, the actual scale leaf packs, the ones that have all the leaves in them. I'm on the fence about that because one reason, this truck, this is the one that the black body came on. This truck has not been driven. This is box stock. It just flexes and feels so good out of the box. I'm, I feel a little bad messing that up. RC4 Drive has listened to us over the years of working on TF2s and they've tuned the truck out of the box how I would do it. And I, I have four more <laughs> shocks to put on it. Dual hoops, the stiffest leaf springs known to man. And uh, we're going for a look. Um, I feel bad, but at least we've got the other Scottsdale and it's tuned and it's it's driving and performing great as well. So at least we've got one that we're going to take out. That, that blue truck is going to be my driver for events this year. I'm going to have that at Texas Crawl Fest end of April. And I'm going to have it at Beat the Creek. And it's going to be my driver. It kind of actually fits with the theme. Beat the Creek this year is kind of a bootleggers Kentucky theme. And uh, it's going to be pretty fun. And Beat the Creek is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to be the biggest event in the world this year, I'm I'm feeling. And uh, they've got a lot of new vendors, a lot of new sponsors, um, a lot of people. I'm actually excited about like Twisted Tree RC that makes the scale antennas that we use. Um, he's going to be there for the first time ever. <clears throat> so yeah, be sure to pack your wallets because <laughs> Beat the Creek is going to be the place to pick up all the scale stuff in person. I'm going to be out there with shop truck kits too, you know, if you want to help support your guy here. Uh, just saying. <laughs> One thing I haven't done yet is put the red body on my shop truck chassis, and I'm trying not to because every time I do that, I end up building a shop truck chassis for it. And we've got a blazer to build on that chassis next, so we're not going to do that. We're going to go full show truck. Um, this one I do want to take apart eventually. This is going to be a longer build. We're not going to be thrashing this one together. I want to play with the suspension. I need to get all of these parts on the truck, get a look, and it's going to be a slow build. This one may not even be done by then. This Right now, it's May, March 29th. So we still got a while before then. So we'll see. But we've got the dual shock hoops. We've got lift blocks. We've got the Rancho steering stabilizer with red boot. We've got, I may have overordered red boots. So we've got a few extra red boots to go with all of this. And uh, yeah, let's get started. We'll pull the body off. We'll start looking at this chassis. Oof. Anyway, back on track. 
All right, guys, it's the next day. I'm going to be doing a lot of this stuff in high speed and edited because they're having an air show today <laughs> about a mile away. A little uh, grass airfield has one every year, so it's pretty noisy. Those old biplanes sound like lawnmowers hovering over your house. So I think the first step we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and install the grill that I like on the body. I'm going to go ahead and install some of these bumpers uh, just for the time being because my other ones are still in transit. And I want to kind of complete the look. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the tires and wheels put together. And then we can see where we're at with the suspension and how how high we need to lift it with blocks. And then we can look at the shocks and stuff. So we're going to do this step by step. It's going to be over the course of a few videos. So first things first, let's do all that. All I did was put the tires and wheels on. I didn't even lift it yet. I love it. That thing looks killer. Um, not sure what all I want to do. I'm not putting the center caps on the wheels yet. Those little Phillips head screws are delicate. And if we go through with all the suspension mods that we're looking at, it's going to take, uh, they're going to be on and off a lot. So we don't want to risk stripping out those screws. But I've got to take a break and do some cleaning in the shop because I'm out of space again. And uh, yeah, I just want to kind of sit and stare at this for a day or so and, uh, yeah, we'll pick back up in a little bit. I'm just digging that. Have this epic stance. And man, oh. Anyway, all right. I gotta get the cleaning. All right, guys. It's honestly been a few days. I made a decision, I think. I don't want to show truck this. I, I've got enough rigs that sit around and don't get driven. But I want to drive it. I like the way it looks, the way it sits. The performance of this chassis is so much improved over other stock TF2s in the past. That I don't want to mess it up. So I've got some of these. I bought a set of four, the Super Scale Steel Leaf Springs for TF2 and Tamiya Bruiser. And these things are ridiculously scale. Um, they do flex a little bit, but it's not gonna, it's gonna kill the performance of a truck. So we may save those and put them on the Toyota since it's already built as a show truck. Um, we might could even put these on the shop truck chassis and uh, it would look pretty cool actually. But um, yeah, we're going to do light on the mod. So I had another four shocks for this thing. And uh, we're just not going to go that route because I don't want it to not flex. This thing has pretty good flex right out of the box. These tires feel great. I think we're going to get this truck dirty. Um, I've got my other uh, new Scottsdale chassis done for the build off. And uh, I got to drive it the other day. And it's a blast. And I, I, think, I think we're going to do just a regular shiny build and rock it like it is. So I've got the Red Shock boots. I've got a set of four we're going to throw on here. And I've got the Rancho uh, stabilizer, steer, or, yeah, steering stabilizer, which replaces your drag link, basically, or your whatever steering link. So we'll add a little bit of splash to it, but I'm not going to go all out with KC lights and dual shock mounts and all of that because I want to drive it and I want it to perform. So, uh, yeah, so let's get started on that. I'm going to pull the body off. And we'll start looking at these shock boots and uh, I even looked like lifting it a little bit more and stuff. It's just, I don't want to change it. Uh, doing the dual shocks, it's going to be stiff as a board. Doing those, those uh, leaf springs, <laughs> it's going to have zero flex and we're just going to kill the performance of the truck for a style. And while it would look cool, I, I do want to drive it. So that's where we're at. Glad I didn't put the wheel nuts on yet or the covers on yet. So we can take these off and get to the shocks and, uh, so let's get started with the steering stabilizer. All right, I want to get a little creative with this. I can't get this screw all the way out of this axle end right here. So I've got it out a little bit. Um, 
almost all the way, but it would not come through that last piece. So instead of using the short ends that it came with on that end, we're just gonna swap on the one that's already attached and roll with that. I'm trying to get the length right right now. Um, I am gonna go ahead and move the servo up. Um, add my little three, four mil spacers in there um, because if you look at it while we're here, this side is, I'm not sure if you can see that, about four millimeters higher because we're hitting the servo mount. So that little trick will make it where we need to lengthen this servo arm just a little bit. See, I've already dabbed some Loctite on the threads. I'm probably just gonna go a couple millimeter longer. No need to overdo it. Perfect tool for the job, miniature crescent wrench. Uh, just a simple guy, I see miniature tools and I buy them. All right, we'll get that nice and tight. Check our length again, just a little bit longer and pull this end off. I don't think I'm gonna run the stickers. Stickers don't ever seem to stick to the shocks very well. Um, I don't know what it is. This might hold better because it doesn't have oil on it, but you never know. We'll just slide that all the way to the end. I don't know which direction you're supposed to make it face. I don't know if it's supposed to go boot inside or outside, but this is how it's gonna go because that's the way our rod end situation has afforded it. Doing that longer rod end over there has kind of made this end shorter than it normally would be. So it may make our shock boot look bad. Eh, it doesn't look bad. All right, where's my tool? I can't keep up with nothing. I am gonna put a little Loctite on this because these always fall out on the road. I've got to get more supplies for spacers. I'm out of most of the black and silver ones, and I've, all I've got left is a bunch of fun colored ones that I bought last year from uh, Team K&K &K because I thought I was going to do more drifting, and I was like, I'll do some fun color stuff. All right, so while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and do our shock boots on our front shocks, and I guess the rear as well, so we have easy access. Uh, I am going to cheat and throw this back in the drill and speed this up a little bit. This side will be a little bit easier if we don't have that <laughs> steering link in the way. Uh, these do have a nut on the back of them from RTRs, and there's a, a two or three mil spacer in here. You don't want to lose. Just leave that on there. Shot boots easy enough, just slides on over everything. And then over the eyelet is the toughest part. Actually caused the shock to uh, extend a little bit on its own. Now you're not going to be able to see them as much unless we flip them upside down, but I'm really, I think it's gonna be good enough. And we'll grab our nut. These kind of stay wedged against the axle housing so you can get it, get it on there, which I did not. Yeah, yeah, it's in the nylon. All right, so it worked out good that we had this apart anyway. We'll get this back on. This side was a nightmare because the inner fender really probably should take that off to get to it. Um, I'm just going to do it by hand with the, the bit and uh, go from there. And then we'll move the servo up. If I can get this rod in back in. I did it too tight. I'm going to fight with this for a little bit. And we'll pick back up at the servo. All right, we'll put this with our all of our rods and rod ends so we can build custom stuff with it. Got some M3 three millimeter spacers. Uh, we'll just have to go with red because I'm out of the black and the silver. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo all the servo. Hopefully these screws are long enough. I think they will. It's all so much easier when you take it completely apart, but we ain't got no time for that. Let's see if these screws will work. Normally I would probably lock tight these, but I have a feeling if we start driving this truck, we'll be upgrading the servo. I always start with the hardest side first, the back. All right, where's our other washer? These are like a larger head and they have a, like a flange on them or something for the servos now. It's a little upgrade. I just had to dab the uh, tip on the magnet here on the side of the table to get this stuff to hold. It's not fighting me today. I miss my, my good multi-tool. Want to torque these down too much? Plastic uh, ears on the servo might not hold up. Just 
keep it the one ugga dugga. Oh, right. All right. So now I've got even droop in the front. I'll show you. Now the shot, you can't really see the shocks, they're all, but they're evenly bottomed out. And we're just barely touching the servo. So three millimeters is the magic number for that. Um, I'm gonna do the rear shock boots real quick. I'm not gonna bore you with watching that. Going ahead and putting the center caps on. Not sure if you can even see how tiny that screw is. I'm gonna get my computer repair tools out for it. This is tedious. Um, be very careful with these. It's such a fine thread and uh, I almost stripped one out when I did these on the Toyota build and I uh, probably will never be able to get the ones off the Toyota build because of that. I can't even get them out of my little container here. Do one screw at a time. I don't tighten it up all the way. Just snug them down and come back and get the other one and it <laughs> should be very delicate. All right, guys, so I've been kicking the can long enough. I know what I want to do with this and I'm, I'm just hesitant to do it. Um, so these have that scale engine bay, as you can see here, and it works with all the V8 parts. So I have a tunnel ram, it's 3D printed. It is from Cyanide Speed Shop on Shapeways. Uh, he's an old friend of mine. He's actually lives in New Zealand. I haven't heard from him in years, but his products are still on, on Shapeways. Um, you see, that's what we have here on the rat rod here. <laughs> um, we're going to have to cut the hood, but I I don't know. I'm feeling it. Uh, this 3D printed, this is two pieces. We have the main manifold. We have this piece that I've already slid in here, which I probably shouldn't have. And we have two carburetors. And we have provisions to run actual fuel lines between the carburetors. And then you use these little keychains off of eBay, which I have two of. And you steal these metal intakes um i've actually put mesh down in there so it has some kind of screen um i've done this before i did it on the tank track rat rod as well i'm debating right now the weather's changing and i don't really want to try to paint 3d printed plastic and wait i might steal one off of one of these rat rods to use in the meantime um, we should be able to still use the water neck and connect everything like you're supposed to with the radiator hose and uh yeah, we'll just see. All right, things have escalated. I, I robbed it from this rat rod. This rat rod hadn't even run and drive yet. Um, I Honestly, I hated the way my uh, plug wires looked on there. They were just a little too tall and too much going on. I hate doing plug wires. It's so nasty. Um, I'm kind of curious to see if this kit for this new engine bay would work on the, the V8 as well. I'm assuming it would. Um, it looks like a lot better, simpler design. Um, but this is set up for it. I mean, we've got all the spark plugs and the holes. I just swapped on a stock aluminum intake. I'm missing a water neck. I don't have one in the uh, base under the hood kit. Did not come with a water neck for some reason. At least that I didn't, didn't see it. There's a bunch of little pieces in there. And I wasn't going to dump them out right now because I got enough <laughs> I got enough work ahead of me. So downgraded a rat rod. I'm going to upgrade a truck. Um, I went ahead and stole this one because... It's already got everything on it we need. We've got paint on it. This is the paint that I use, just regular old chrome paint. And it's not enough in there to do what I need to do. And I've had that bottle for a very long time. So kind of figured it was gonna make more of a trouble than it's worth. And then like I said too, the weather is changing. So I guess I'm gonna pull the hood off and we're gonna start looking at swapping this out. I do have some aluminum valve covers from the V8 that we could swap on as well. Oh, let's see how this goes. I hope I don't have to take the whole engine bay out. Um, you gotta basically remove the hood hinges and I think there's some screws in the front as well, but we'll see.
All right, I had to interrupt this because this looks, looks so dang cool. Uh, one little thing. So this has a heater hose that goes into the, uh, here. And that is a 0.7 millimeter bit. <laughs> uh, it has a provision on that because he based this, the base of it off of the RC4 drive one. The aluminum ones, I'm assuming, still have that as well. Um, I hope it's threaded. Um, this one being 3D printed, I've, yeah, we're going to have fun trying to get that in. But I, it's a miracle I had anything that fit this. It was part of that computer uh, tool set. I, I think I have these in my Amazon store. It's called iFixit. And these, these have come in clutch with the scale hardware stuff. I've got 20 different size Phillips heads, star bits, and even you know metric drivers up here all the way down to 0.7 um super super nice kit i got this at home depot on clearance for i think it was still 50 bucks i have no idea what they are on amazon right now but it comes with a nice aluminum driver the back spins and yeah this has come in clutch with these kind of builds um, i gotta figure out if i need to t drill this out or we can force this tiny little sucker in there um, don't want to leave anything disconnected you know, get all our vacuum lines and stuff hooked up. Uh, radiator hose. One thing with this is it's at a different angle. It's kind of angled backwards that way. So our radiator hose is going to have to make some hard bends. I don't know how it's going to look. Um, let's see. This is the radiator hose I offer on my store for the rat rod kits. It's a little bit more flexible. This stuff is a little bit smaller. It stays on very well, but it's a yeah we'll see this is the piece that's supposed to snake in there so we'll see how it works and um, that's the only concern i've got i think i'm gonna have to find some microscopic drill bits and at least tap this a little bit because it's got so much paint in it um yeah we're not getting anywhere with that so on the hunt through the toolbox all right lucky for me this is it did have a hole all the way through from the print um the only drill bit i have is for a dremel that 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 size and I've long lost the adapter to make it actually fit in the Dremel. But you don't want to go that high speed with it. Um, basically, we're just trying to clear the paint. So we're just going to do it all by hand the best we can. If I can get it started a little bit more. And hope this isn't too big. This is the second smallest of my little Dremel drill bit set. The first one is broken years and years ago. So, and we're out. I can't do it from the top, obviously, because... There's just not quite enough room there. So we're just going to keep working it in from the bottom. Now we're cooking. As soon as I put this on this truck, I went to make a reel. And it's blowing up right now because it looks too dang cool. And I set it to Pantera because this truck just screams Pantera to me. So that's what I went. I went and put the Cowboys from Hell album on straight through. And that's what we're going to rock out while we build this thing. One more little note. So... The RC four-wheel drive, uh, I didn't have to take the plug wires off, which was a miracle. Um, they made this distributor just press in. So it, it was kind of glued in. It came out nice and easy. The ones for the V8 that are aluminum, they were made to go on the other side, and they threaded into the block. And that's why I ended up having to take all the wires off to steal this intake. But this one, luckily, it just presses in, so we got to leave it all intact. Um, I did need to come clean out some of the paint from this hole, so it'll slide in a little easier. I did have to cut my... Uh, fuel lines down just a little bit so they don't stick back very far um, but yeah this I mean this has been modified you see there's a hole there for the motor wires to come out for the scale engines uh, but yeah it's multi-piece I said this this piece and this piece are separate this is the actual RC four-wheel drive water neck um, the, the carburetors I think I painted a charcoal metallic rust-oleum the mesh in there is from a screen door <laughs> I cut it out and again these these caps there's links to that on the cyanide speed shop on shapeways these uh intakes are from a blow off valve keychain on ebay and uh yeah i mean it's like a three dollar keychain about like five of them for ten or something silly and yeah just kind of put it all together the fuel lines are actually made out of welding wire that is i don't know what diameter gauge uh flux core welding wire that i have on my machine and uh yeah just ran it a little bit out ran it through one side spun it around stuck it back through the other and we've got some nice fuel line detail. We'll just run it off down to the back. So I think that ought to be opened up enough. We'll get this thing uh, mounted.
All right, guys. Well, I was really hesitant to cut a hole in the hood. I almost just went without a hood. Um, there's so much to see under there. And it's like, you know, do we really cover it up? I figured we had to try it. Now we're forever <laughs> stuck with this. But it, it looks cool. It just fits the part. This thing looks like a mud truck with a tunnel ram. Um, yeah, I'm digging it. Made everything work. That bolts straight to this engine bay in this truck. Um, everything is the same between the scale V8s and this, and it, it all kind of works. I mean, the radiator hose worked out. Um, was able to keep the coolant hose, the spark plug wires, everything in their place. So I'm digging it. Uh, this truck needed something to set it apart because we couldn't just rock it with these tires and wheels. And uh, definitely think we found that. I cut the hood hole as best I could. I made it a little bit big. I mean, a little bit in the front because it has to lift up and back. And yeah, you had to clear these stacks and all that. But it's just the right height. They they really nailed that with this engine compartment as far as the height of the way things would fit on a real truck. I think they uh, <clears throat> they definitely nailed that. So I don't know what's next for this truck. We, we've got a lot of mods to do. I really want to do the metal wipers. I hate these wipers that come on these bodies. They just look absolutely terrible. Little plastic black things. Um, I've got to order some more. They're a nightmare to put together, but they look so good when when you finally get them on. Um, interior, I'm thinking tan, brown, tan, maybe. I don't know. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. I have a set of Traxxas bumpers for this truck. I really wasn't feeling it at first. I, it didn't bother me that these were a little bit bulky. Um, I might do the RC4 drive, the new aluminum bumpers. They've they've got those. They, they're they actually a lot better. They're, they don't look as different, but they are very different once you see them in person. And uh, they might fit the bill for this pretty well. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see built out of this truck. I want to run it. I want to do some crazy stuff with it. Um, I think... Once we go to do the interior, we're definitely going to do the window trims and stuff black and, and add that depth to it. It really, that's the only downfall of these RTR bodies is they don't have the window trims painted black. Um, the windows are unfortunately glued in, the side windows and the rear window. So we'll see what we can come up with to remove that and make it work. Um, we got a lot of projects going on, but this one I think is, uh, it's got a special place in my heart. These... These wheels and tires just, oh, they just speak to me. So <laughs> anyways, I'm going to wrap it up, guys. It's been a long night. I appreciate y'all watching. I appreciate everybody following along. And uh, yeah, check all this stuff out, RC4 Wheel Drive. Again, the I'll try to remember to put a link in the video description for the intake on this engine. It is from Cyanide Tube. Um, he was building rat rods around back when I first started. And he was doing everything out of metal. We were old friends. I haven't talked to him in years, but... He's still got his stuff on Shapeways. And uh, yeah, get out there and do something fun with the hobby. Keep it scale, and I'll see you next time.